you know, after, uh, you know, you're playing with Peninsula Minor Hockey and then going to OHA for three years and then getting a scholarship to Cornell University, um, can you explain, uh, I guess, the recruiting process on the woman's side and then also just playing NCAA hockey uh, for Cornell? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think from a young age, so I actually have an older sister who was a rower, which, as you know, is a pretty big sport in Victoria. Um, and she ended up going to Kansas State University on a scholarship. So she's 12 years older than me. So I was about five when she was going away. And I remember seeing her and thinking like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my education paid for and I'm going to go play in the NCAA. So from a young age, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And when I hit Bantam, I kind of, you know, my mom and I knew that if I wanted to move forward in hockey, I'd probably have to play with, with other girls. and. Um, with the nature of Vancouver Island, we don't don't have like a ton of hockey, let alone female hockey players. Especially when when I was younger, um, it's a little bit different now. With it's growing a lot, so it's growing a lot, especially yeah. being on the we'll just say the beginner end. They're uh, doing a good job of trying to grow it with the uh, Victoria Rain. Um, yeah, exactly. And yeah, lots of people connected around that team, uh, and and organization association but um around the world women's hockey is getting very popular especially while i've played in uh all those different countries whether it being um you know sweden denmark russia uh china uh, and even they got in australia they got uh, women's hockey there so i don't think it's professional but i could be wrong i'm not sure but um, they do have women's hockey that they play in in a league um but yeah, it's growing big time and yeah. good to see out in the Northwest here um, for it to get bigger and, and girls like yourself can inspire uh, and have someone to look up to for these young girls. But um, yeah, talk more about the, uh, the recruiting process and how you got to Cornell. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, so I ended up moving away and going to the Okanagan Hockey Academy and I had uh, two coaches there. Um, that had played in the NCAA for St. Lawrence, which you know well. Um, and um, so I knew that going there, I'd have two people that, that really understood the landscape of women's hockey and had those connections with NCAA and recruiting. And um, obviously being in BC, uh, we had to travel a lot for, for tournaments and things. And um, uh, as you know, there's probably a scout watching almost every hockey game and whatever rinks being played. So we went to a lot of tournaments out East and um, scouts are watching. We had, you know, different showcases at OHA where they'd bring in six to eight college coaches and they'd kind of be on ice for practices and, and things like that. Um, and then, yeah, I ended up, I was lucky enough to be recruited by a few different schools and um, I narrowed it down to, to three uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota and Cornell. And I knew all three of them would be good uh, hockey wise. But um, obviously, I wanted to make sure that I was getting a good education. And, and I was someone who took school really seriously growing up. Growing up. Um, so I wanted to go to a school that I knew I'd be challenged at. Um, so that's kind of what pushed going to Cornell and, and getting an Ivy League degree kind of ahead of the other, the other two. Um, and then it worked out uh, scholarship-wise. And uh, yeah, and I ended up, ended up going with that one. Yeah, so a couple questions. Um, one, were you number one? Was the women's team number one before the stop of the COVID uh, coming into it? Were, were you guys? Yeah, doing? yeah. So our men's and women's team were both ranked number one at Cornell uh, okay. when yeah. uh, they canceled the NCAA tournament. So we, the women's, uh, the women's side is about two weeks ahead of the men's side, I think, usually. So we'd already played our ECAC tournament um, and we were just, we just got ranked number one going into the NCAA tournament and we were set to play Mercyhurst in the quarterfinal. Um, and it's then been, the next been good for a while. Before. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Mercyhurst back when, uh, when I was yeah. in school days and Mercyhurst was good. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, I think Cornell and Mercyhurst always managed to end up playing each other in the quarterfinal of the NCAA tournament. I think it's happened like five or six times, which is weird, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then also going back 
you know, being in perspective of a, of a young girl coming up, um, are there any little pieces of advice that you can help them with through the recruiting process? Because there is many obstacles and uh, things that, whether it was the player, which doesn't probably know that much about the, the process, but even the parents, um, there's many little things in there that they, they can ask or they can, um, that they should know. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I think one thing that kind of happens on the women's side, and I think it's a little bit different than, than the men's side is that when you see your, when you see the national team, you think that that's kind of the be all end all. So I think a lot of girls see that and then they hit a certain age where they're like, you know what, I'm probably not going to play on the national team, even though that was probably a lot of girls dreams growing up. And then I think the college route kind of sometimes gets for, forgotten. Um, and for me, I think that's one of the most valuable things any female hockey player can get is, is any sort of scholarship to, to play college hockey. Um, and I think the benefit of that, I mean, if you look at let statistics, you know, that, that show, you know, f- female CEOs of companies, like I want to say like over 60% of them played college sports. So it's like, it's things like that, that are going to, that are going to help you if, even if you don't end up playing for the national team, but getting the opportunity to play a college sport um, really will put you ahead in terms of getting jobs down the road or moving forward in, in the non-hockey world. Um, so I think, I guess advice for a young girl is, is don't forget about the education side of things and what hockey can do for you on, on that side. Um, and yeah, like you said, there's a lot of different avenues. So, you know, the NCAA is, all about scholarships and I know the U sport league is uh, I I know it's changed a little bit, but it's not necessarily full ride scholarships, but I know you can get partial scholarships or or things paid for on the U sport side. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I think advice wise, I think just ask questions. I think as a young kid, you, you think, you know, but asking someone who knows a little bit more like yourself or me or someone who's been there and kind of sees the landscape from a different perspective and not being afraid as a parent or a player to ask. Yeah, definitely. uh, Now that I'm in the coaching business and and doing all that, it's funny now that you look back and it's all what our our parents or family or mentors have always always asked questions. But I was just like that one kid who didn't really ask too many questions and just kind of went with it. And kind of, you feel you kind of invincible and, and, and confident with your, I guess skills or whatever to take you that far and and yeah it, it took them that far but it was so important that uh if I were to ask questions because now that uh you know as we're older um we have to ask questions about everything and you might as well start when you're young yeah for sure and there's so many I mean there's so many schools out there in Canada and the United States and and they're all different in so many different ways and being from the west where hockey in college isn't really that big it's more of like a midwest east thing especially in the united states so you know i got recruited by a lot of schools that i'd never heard of and i was you know i had to ask a coach like you know what is the school what would you know tell me something because i don't know or i had to do my research on it because i had i didn't know what it was going to offer me or what was going to if it was going to be a good match for me or not. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, while going through that recruiting process as, as a player, as I had successful years in the BCHL, I was, you know, you always, I was talking to other, other schools and there, and some of them, like you said, I hadn't even heard about. Um, and you're like, Oh, I just want to talk to the big programs. They, at that time it was like the WCHAs. Um, right. I had flown down to St. Cloud and Minnesota State in my 18-year-old year, but um, and I really wanted to go um, to the WCJ, but more so St. Cloud. Um, Maine was also a goal in mind because all Korea had, all the Koreas had gone there, and those were right. idols, mentors. But um, yeah, just just yeah, the fact of um, asking questions towards. Um, the programs because there are some very good programs that you've never heard of. Um, yeah, for sure. I remember one time this guy came up to me uh, and basically right on the spot, the one time, because I guess they don't come out our way, but in Merritt's rink, really small rink and cold and we don't get very many fans, but he basically kind of 
verbally offered me kind of a scholarship and it was a good one, but he's, it was Miami, Ohio. And he's like, yeah, we're not in Miami and Florida. And I was like, it's like, Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. And, um, but yeah, asking questions is so, so important. And, um, I really like the U S and, and especially their college sports. And, um, you know, it's, it's important for our parents to tell us that we should get our education and all that. And they know the social part comes with it. But to us, uh, I'm sure you could uh, back me on it, but having that, the social life um, yeah. and, and the network of the U S and, and NCAA is, is amazing and things that you'll never forget all your, a lot of your best friends and people that you'll keep in touch with for the rest of your life were, were from school probably. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a, it's a huge part of it is the people you're surrounded by. I know like when I, I went on three visits to Wisconsin, Cornell, Minnesota, and everyone thought I was going to Wisconsin because I had a couple friends that went there and they just, you know, everyone would have put money on that. And then I went to Wisconsin and I, I just, as soon as I got into the locker room and everything, I was like, you know what? I don't think this is for me. And then I went to Cornell and I felt, you know, I felt like I was at home as soon as I met the girls and I walked around campus, I was like, I could see myself here. So yeah, you just, you never really know. 